Good morning. Just one quick announcement. Uh, confirmations classes, junior confirmation classes start next week. So if you have a, a student that is interested in uh, going through that, please contact us soon. And if you're an adult and you'd like to join the congregation, of course, too, we can uh, start an adult confirmation class around your schedule, too. So I encourage you to do that. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Amen. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ from the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either deserve or we either desire or deserve, pour down upon us the abundance of mercy, your mercy, forgiving those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things that we are not worthy to ask. Except through the merits and meditation of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Old Testament reading for the 11th Sunday after Trinity is from the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, 
I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. And Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 50. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. <laughs> Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. For you hate discipline, and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him, and you keep company with adulterers. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought I was one like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. text is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried he was buried on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, 
and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up in the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. The tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And the one who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, conceived under the law, We now sing hymn 559, Oh, How Great Is Your Compassion.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A few decades ago, on a warm Sunday in May, in the middle of the sermon hymn, an investigator from a local sheriff's department felt his pager go off. He quickly exited the church after he read the message on his pager, which read, Need your help with a double homicide. Ironically, the scene of the murders was located in a church parsonage just 15 miles away where Pastor Skip Cernick and his wife Karen lay lifeless in their bed. They had been discovered when elders of the congregation came to see why they didn't have a pastor that morning. This particular crime scene was extremely gruesome. And even though he had seen such things before, the sight of such an awful sin come to fruition still made this investigator feel numb on that Sunday morning. Weeks of work went by and DNA and fingerprints linked the murder of the pastor and his wife to several other homicides in numerous states across the land and it became apparent that the suspect who did this was a serial killer. The killer was elusive and managed to avoid capture for quite a while. Killer had a few aliases and roamed all over North America. While trying to track down the killer, even though it had been several weeks since the actual murders, the investigator again became numb, but this time it wasn't because of what he saw. While interviewing the serial killer's girlfriend, trying to learn the killer's habits so he could be caught, the investigator learned that the killer always wore a cross. Now, we all know that just because you wear a cross does not necessarily mean that you're a Christian. But could this man be a Christian? Could this man be forgiven for such terrible sins? After all, he was a murderer like Cain in our reading today. And not only that, but a serial killer. He had broken the fifth commandment not just once, but a number of times. The investigator did not want to believe that the killer could actually be a Christian. He didn't want to have anything in common with a man who had committed such horrible sins. He knew that the, this killer was unworthy to be called a Christian, just like Paul says he was unworthy to be called an apostle in our text today. Yet, Paul was called an apostle by the grace of God, Paul, the one who persecuted the church of God by supervising the murder of Stephen, was forgiven. The Lord went on to use Paul as an important servant in his church. In spite of his sins of murder, Paul was forgiven and called to be an apostle. The investigator was dumbfounded. Could this man, who had murdered a pastor and his wife in such a gruesome way, could he actually be forgiven? Along that same line of thought, could Cain be forgiven? Well, that's why the Lord put a mark on Cain so others would not kill him, so he would have time to repent and be saved. Just like Paul was given a chance to repent from his ignorance in which he had persecuted the church by supervising the murder of Christians. The investigator came to realize that he did have something in common with that serial killer. He, too, had broken the fifth commandment, though not in the same way. He had broken it numerous times. He was a serial sinner and did not deserve to be forgiven any more than that serial killer deserved to be forgiven. The investigator had read his Bible. He knew God's word says that everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Although at first the investigator thought of himself as better than the murderer, he grew numb as he realized that his sin were right beside the hideous sins of that serial killer. The sins of both men played a part in why Jesus had to die on the cross. In God's eyes, all sins, especially continual sins, are despicable. In John's first epistle, God's word says, no one who abides in Christ keeps on sinning. 
yet we all keep on sinning like serial sinners, don't we? We must repent. God's word says, no one who abides in Christ keeps on sinning. We cannot continue to hate and hold on to a grudge, for that is repeatedly committing the sin of murder in the Lord's eyes. Dear friends, as we contemplate our readings today, we should each ask ourselves the inevitable question, who in our readings should we identify with? Are we like Cain? Do we have something in common with Cain, the first murderer mentioned in our readings today? Or are we like Paul, the second murderer to be mentioned in our readings today? Truth be told, both men, like you and me, are unworthy to be called Christians because of our sins. But by the grace of God, we are what we are. We are Christians, forgiven people, and his grace toward us is not in vain. The story of Cain and Abel is also mentioned in the book of Hebrews, and when we read that, it really clarifies what actually happened. It says, by faith. By faith, Abel offered a more acceptable than Cain. It was faith by which he offered a more acceptable sacrifice. It is faith, in other words, trust in what God provides that makes the difference. Not what Abel provides. It's not Abel's sacrifice, his work, that makes him more acceptable to God. It's it's not that Abel earned God's favor by being more reverent, more humble, or By giving a better sacrifice. Scripture says it is faith. It is trust in the promised Messiah who would humbly sacrifice himself on behalf of Abel. It is faith and trust in Christ or the lack thereof that makes the difference in how they and their offerings are regarded. It is trust in the promised Christ and what he would do that brought favor to Abel. And it is faith or trust in Christ who came and died for for all of our sins that enables murderers like Paul and us to have God's favor. So Paul is a good example to us. Paul himself wrote, I received mercy for this reason, that in me, the chief of sinners, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to others who are to trust in him for eternal life. Paul was a murderer like Cain. He was unworthy to be called an apostle, and yet he was indeed called an apostle, for the grace of God that was poured out for him at the cross was not in vain. The same thing is true for each of you. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've thought, no matter what you've left undone, the sacrifice of God's Son on the cross is big enough to take away that sin. Now, Satan, the crouching lion, would like you to doubt that terrible sins are forgiven. But Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. Whether it be your sins of hatred or murder, your sins of adultery, your sins of injustice, your sins of racism, your sins of doubt or idolatry, no matter what it is that you have done or left undone, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross outweighs the sins of the whole world. His sacrifice outweighs your sins, and it also outweighs the sins committed against you. The scales of justice are tipped so that there is forgiveness. Justice and equity are established in Christ Jesus. In accordance with the scriptures, God has established equity. He has executed justice and righteousness in the sacrifice of his son, the seed of Jacob. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. We are unworthy to be called children of the Heavenly Father. Yet we are rightly called children of God, for the blood that was shed for us brings us mercy, grace, and forgiveness. In baptism, we receive the spirit of adoption when our sins are washed away. Blood was not shed in vain. 
We who are formerly serial sinners, who are strange from God and unworthy of God's grace in his name, now have peace by the blood of his cross. Paul is a great example for us. Though he was guilty of murder, he was forgiven. And just as that grace motivated Paul to work harder than the rest, so also with us. His grace is not in vain. We don't earn his grace by a better sacrifice or by working harder than the rest. Rather like Abel, we trust in the sacrifice that was to be made by the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Even though Cain is guilty of a terrible sin, notice that God was patient with him. The Lord gave him a chance to repent. Even though Paul was guilty of terrible sins, God was patient towards him also. God moved him to repentance and faith. Dear friend, Scripture also says that God is patient with you, not wishing that any should, per- should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So God is not only patient with Cain and Paul, he is patient with all of us. Even though we tend to think that we are better than those who have committed murder, nevertheless, God is patient with us. Even though we are prone to think like the Pharisee in our gospel reading, God is merciful and patient toward us. He has been patient with us when we have considered ourselves to be so much better than the drug addicts and the prostitutes and the murderers in prison. God is patient with us. And like Paul, the former Pharisee, God moves us to repentance. God has been patiently waiting for us to repent of our Pharisaical attitudes. God has been patiently waiting for us to humble ourselves and realize that we too are sinners and unworthy of God's grace, unworthy to be called Christians because of our continual sins of hatred and disdain for those who are ignorant of the truth. But when we are overcome by hatred and disdain, regardless of the reason for that hatred and contempt, then we are guilty of breaking the fifth commandment repeatedly like a serial killer. It's time to stop trying the Lord's patience. Thankfully, we have a gracious God who has not only sent his grace to be with Paul, but also with us. God sends you his grace again today as you hear the sermon and receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have his grace, for it was earned for you by the saving work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. You have his grace, you have his favor, and his grace is not in vain. He moves us to humbly trust in the baptismal grace that he has provided for us and the floodwaters that are strong enough to wash away the sins of even tax collectors. Flood waters are powerful enough to wash away the sins of adulterers. Those saving, miraculous waters, which are mysteriously connected with the blood of Christ, are even able to wash away the sins against the fifth commandment, washing away the sins of hatred and murder that have been committed by sinners like Cain and Paul, and like you and me. Jesus Christ, God's own Son, was the only sacrifice that was big enough or good enough to take away the sin of the whole world. Like Abel, we trust in that sacrifice. We have faith in that offering, which Christ has given on our behalf. God has regard for us, as he did for Abel and as he did for Paul. Paul is an example for us and how powerful God's grace and mercy really are. Though like Paul, we are unworthy to serve in God's kingdom. Christ is the one who is worthy, and his worthiness is credited to us by faith. His worthiness is made to be our worthiness through our trust in him, through our faith. So we have his grace. We have his grace, grace earned and given to us by Christ Jesus himself. And in accordance with the scriptures... That grace certainly has not been given to us in vain.
And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise for prayer if you're able. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Righteous God, as you marked Cain and gave him your protection despite his sin, we thank you that you have marked us in our holy baptism and, and still protect us from spiritual harm despite our sin. We praise you for washing away our sins. Deliver us when attacked with temptation and renew us in faith and life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, help us always to be good and faithful stewards of all that you so graciously provide for us. Give us a predisposition to share. Keep us mindful that we are truly are our brother's keepers so that we share our blessings of both body and soul with those around us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, Help your church on earth shine the glorious light of the gospel into all darkened hearts across the world. Bless the work of missionaries and pastors everywhere that your people may serve as the salt that you have called us to be. We ask your particular blessing upon Elliot Derricks and his work in Cameroon, Reverend Chuck Ferry and his work in Asia, and Reverend Jacob Galbert and his work in Togo. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Mighty God, be merciful to our land that those with any authority would Exercise it with wisdom and righteousness that we would have peaceful days. Be merciful to the nations of the world that wars would cease and harmony be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all who are homebound, especially Ruth, Richard, Sharon, Carol, Lee, and Jeanette. Give them comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone, but you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, bless our school and our efforts to prepare a new generation in the faith to serve you. Give our students the joy of learning and sustain our teachers with energy and passion to pass on the faith to the next generation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Please have mercy on those who are ill or in need of healing, especially Julia and her family, Leah, Dorothy, Amy, John, Kathy, Bonnie, Marie, Elroy, Catherine, Marjorie, Janice, Vivian, Kristen, Bruce, Peter, Ruth, Dick, Willard, Jerry, John and Marge, Willie, Wildred, Jim, Alice, Dave, and Tom. Bless them all with strength and faith in their times of need. Please bless the work of medical professionals that they may serve as your instruments of healing. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. I ask you to bless and keep those serving in the military, both here and abroad, especially Joshua, Lance, Tristan, Gabriel, Adam, Riley, Brandon, Jordan, Catherine, and Matthew. Ask for a continued blessing on all emergency personnel that you would also keep them safe and bless their work that we may all live in peace and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, please look with compassion upon all those who are suffering from hunger, or for homelessness, or from poverty or discrimination, from reduced employment or unemployment. Have mercy and take away their sufferings. Move us all to be your instruments of grace and mercy to those around us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. If all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. King of all creation, you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take heat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Communion hymns are hymn 636, Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness, and 611, Chief of Sinners, Though I Be.
Let us pray. God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We now sing our closing hymn, hymn 707, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. <laughs> 